Hello and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Waynesville and our online worship service today. I am Pastor Becky Brown, Associate Pastor here, and so glad that you are worshiping with us whenever and wherever you are. Um, we are grateful for this online presence, and so we would love to know you. So if you are worshiping with us and would like to connect um, with one of us here at the church, um, there's a link to a form in the comments in the section there in the description. Um, take a look at that, fill it out. Um, we would love to call you and get to know you um, because we're starting to open up little bits by little bits um, to receive people into the church and we want to be able to know who you are so we can incorporate you into the life of our church community. Um, so today um, please don't forget the importance of reaching out and sharing love and peace with um, those that you are thinking about. I know when you watch worship, at least for us, um, we think about people and we wonder about people. We say, I wonder how they are. So take those wonderings as nudges of the Holy Spirit and reach out to people. Um, wanted to make you aware of a few things. We are starting today, this Sunday, again with um, live worship opportunities. Um, we have opened up our sanctuary in a very safe way with strict COVID restrictions and mask mandates um, to make sure and ensure all of our safety. Um, you can sign up to join us for in-person worship um, through a Sign Up Genius link. Um, so please do that. We would love to start seeing your faces again um, and worshiping together safely. Um, we're anticipating to have a big Easter celebration together. Um, we are starting out with three services on Easter, separated out with vigorous cleaning in between. Um, so be on the lookout for that and register for those, um, those services. And when, don't worry about them filling up because we as a staff are committed to having Easter service all day long um, because it is that important for us to celebrate the resurrection together um, with as many as, of you all who would like to join us. So as we approach, um, Holy Week opportunities are coming up. So make sure you keep an eye out for all of those. Um, be looking for ways to engage, some fascinating and wonderful ways to, to engage every single day of Holy Week as we approach our Easter together. So again, we're just so thankful to be a part of the church with you. Um, we look forward to the coming days where we are seeing children here at the church this afternoon and youth as well for a short amount of time for fellowship and devotion and time together. Um, it really feels like um, church is coming back alive, even though it's never really been gone. So we celebrate and we have joy. So let us worship God and give thanks today. Came and died. 
Good morning, friends. It's so good to see you. Um, it's Mr. Scott here. I miss you all so much. I'm standing out here on the front yard of the church, um, and I'm underneath the cross that we, uh, that we put out here every year um, during the season of Lent. And this year, um, we're going to be doing something special. You know, every year in Holy Week, we take rocks and we build a labyrinth. And last year, because of the pandemic, we built a labyrinth out here on the grass and then we built another labyrinth in the summer and then we built another labyrinth um, during the month of December and so we're not going to build a labyrinth this year we're going to do something a little bit different and I'm really excited about it we are going to as a church collectively we're all going to participate in building an altar out here in front of our church we're going to use the rocks that we would usually use to make um, a labyrinth and we're going to use those rocks to build up an altar. And this is going to be a holy space for us. We're going, to, um, we're going to record videos for worship services out here. We're going to take communion around this altar cross. And so there's a lot of ways that I need your help and I need everyone in the church to help out with this. Um, you might just come by church and you might walk over here and you might uh, choose a rock. And I want you to choose a rock. You got to think about what rock do I want to place on the altar for FUMC? I like this one. You know, I know these rocks. Jim King gave us these rocks many years ago. And I've started to know some of these rocks. I love this one because it's got the beautiful um, sedimentary lines in there. And so I'm going to place this rock. I'm going to put it right here. And I have helped make the altar here at church just a little bit taller a little bit fuller and so I want to invite you all to come to church and help me build this altar help us all build this altar for us um, you can grab rocks from the pile that's right over there you can bring rocks from home you might even go down and pick up one of the rocks um, that was painted last year or you might paint a new rock yourself um, these rocks are going to be part of the church's worship for a long time. As we, uh, as we go forward, we're going to have more altars. We're going to build more labyrinths. These rocks are going to be something that always remind us that even though, even though we can't be together still, even though we're not all together every week, that we are still part of the body of Christ, that it is not these rocks that make this place holy, but it is our very selves. So I want to invite all of you to come to church and help us build the altar. Gracious God, we begin our prayer with thanks. A time of thanksgiving for the many ways in which we continue to see you the ways in which you always surprise us by your grace. We give thanks for the simple things, like the sunlight that breaks through after days and days of rain, for the hint of warmth in the middle of the winter to give us just a little bit more to make it into spring. And as we are reminded of the changing of the seasons, we consider this as part of our journey with you as we walk the familiar path of life, as we continue down the road that is this Lenten season. We consider the ways in which our path might come to a fork. Those times in our lives, or maybe we're having it right now, where we are considering where to go next. Perhaps it's a time in which we look ahead and we think, do I really want to continue in this way that I've been traveling all this time? Do I need to shift my focus and change the direction? Do I need to reevaluate the way that life has been going because I need to have more focus on you? There are those times where we have to make decisions that are not easy ones to make. And they often involve um, the people that we love and care about the most. And so God, as we continue on our journey this Lent, may we lean in a little closer 
to hear your whispering voice. May we continue to seek your affirmation through our discernment as we want to live and want to walk in the path that is guided by you, that is full of your Holy Spirit, so that our feet are walking on holy ground. So we ask that you would continue to shape us, to carve, carve out within us the things that are of your mercy and grace, so that we might be your living vessels in this world. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Day each to age he stands. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Good morning. I will be reading scripture from Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier, where he had first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. 
but the land could not support them, while they both stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abram's herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abram said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked up and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt toward Zor. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our text says that Abram, along with Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, that, that after leaving Egypt, they journeyed on by stages uh, from the Negev and, and to Bethel. Uh, we do that, you know. Uh, we journey on in, in stages. That, that's what I've learned, uh, not only from stuff that I've studied, but just from the experience of life itself, and maybe you too. I know in college when I took um, uh, developmental psychology class, we studied Eric Erickson and the uh, stages of human development, specifically psychosocial development and the stages that, that we go through. Uh, in seminary, I studied with Dr. James Fowler, Margaret McCleskey's brother, and he was a genius and a, a pioneer in the field of our faith development. And he wrote a really smart book uh, entitled Stages of Faith. This year, our family, and maybe you've experienced this too, we've talked a lot about uh, the stages of grief and, and how our grief is a journey. All of these things, and, and so many others like it, um, we, we move and, and we grow in stages. This pilgrimage that we're on, you know, it's complicated. Um, we know this from, from experience, that it's not always as simple as moving from point A to point B uh, to get to this place where we're going. Uh, if Abram's pilgrimage teaches us anything, it, it certainly teaches us that. After he left Egypt, it says that he went back to Bethel, that, that place where he had already been on his journey. Uh, it's, it says that that's the, that's the place uh, that, that he started. He went back to Bethel, to this place where he started, where he had pitched his tents, and this place where he built this altar. You know, they're building altars all over the place in the Old Testament. Every time someone experiences the presence of God in some powerful and moving way, uh, they'll, they'll build an, an altar, a, a reminder. Like, I don't know what those altars looked like. I don't know how they built them, but they built them. And Abram goes back to this place, or, or at least he, he finds himself there, where he built this altar, where he called on the name of the Lord. You know, it strikes me that sometimes you and I, we need to circle back to some place that we've been before. We need a fresh start. The season of Lent, you know, it, it's a reminder with the ashes or, or, or with the dirt that we are dirt. We remember that we're dust and that we're going to go back to it someday. You know, the reality is, is that, that someday someone is going to scatter my ashes to the wind or they're going to dig a hole in this earth six feet deep and they're going to put my body into it. 
um, that we're mortal. It's, it's a sobering thought. Also, it's a reminder that we're sinful. We remember our sin. And, and that's sobering, too. You know, Abram, he had a rough go of it in Egypt. Egypt for Abram was a disaster. That was the, the story that, that we, we looked at last week. You know, uh, his fear, his mistrust, his deception. Like he caused a lot of pain. And so Abram, I mean, he kind of needed to circle back. He, he kind of needed to, to have a fresh start, to, to call on the name of the Lord. And that's what he did. And, you know, I think it's probably, you know, a good thing for us to follow him there today. Um, my question for us is, what is it that we need to circle back to? Um, what, what is that altar or life marker, that place where we need to call on the name of the Lord? I invite us to do that today. Our liturgy invites us to such a thing. Merciful God, we confess that we've not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. And we come to this place. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus. You know, Abram, if you noticed, he was really rich. It says that he was rich in livestock and he was, he was rich in silver and, and he was rich in gold. Um, it makes me wonder him coming out of Egypt like that uh, with all of this wealth. If maybe some of the bad decisions in Egypt were motivated by greed at Sarah's expense. We can't ever forget uh, what she had to go through in Egypt. It says that, that Lot was, was really wealthy too. Like he also had his, his herds and, and his tents. And um, they were a formidable group. It says that their possessions were so great that the land could not support them living together. Like this reminder to us that um, as we go on our way, as we go on our journey that's life, the stuff that we do, it affects the planet. It affects the land. That's a big topic. We're actually going to go there after Easter for a couple of weeks um, with our Earth Day series. Um, that it matters how we live in this land that God entrusts us to care for and to till. But Abram and Lot, they had such possessions. And it was also, it was also causing lots of strife. So it says that, that Lot's people and Abram's people um, they were going at each other. It doesn't break that down. But you know, when you've got a lot of stuff and you're trying to manage it and hold on to it and you know, I mean, it, it was causing trouble. If you, if you notice in this story, at this point of separation, like they, they come to this conclusion that uh, we, have to go, we have to go our separate ways. Um, notice what, what they all see. I mean, look at Abram. Abram is, is really kind of full of, of grace. Like, he wants peace. He's, he's really concerned about the strife, especially because it's family. You know, it's his nephew Lot that he loves, and it's, it's kindred, and, and there's tension, and there's strife, and he just wants there to be peace. And so, it's interesting that as the patriarch, he would have the say. Like, 
Abram would be the one to say, look at all of this. I'm taking this spot with the cows. Uh, you can go over there with the rocks lot and, and your people. Um, that's not what he does. Uh, he shows kindness and generosity and he kind of uh, lets Lot choose. And you know, my experience has been that whenever we spend time at the altar, whenever we've called on the name of the Lord, we journey differently. We're better at it. When we look at Lot and his view of the world, it just seems like, like all Lot can see is Lot. And all that he's concerned about is um, how his situation can improve. And you know, it shows up again in this text. It says, living in the land were the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I wonder about them. I, I wonder what they must have thought about these powerful, wealthy people moving into and dividing up their homeland. So you remember how this whole pilgrimage began with Abram and Sarah. It began with this promise, this, this promise of blessing. And God says, I will bless you and that in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So exactly how does that play out? I've wondered about that. How are all the families of the earth going to be blessed? Is God going to just miraculously provide? We know stories like this some centuries later with Moses. They're, they're in this dry, barren place and, and God miraculously brings water from the rock so that they won't, won't thirst to death. And in the mornings there's bread that miraculously comes from heaven. In the evening all of a sudden there's all these tender quails for dinner. Like, is that what God's going to do? Like, what's Abram's role in this whole thing? I mean, the story does say, God does say that in you, Abram, all of the families of the earth are going to be blessed. So, I think about us. Our, our question for us today, as, as we come to this altar, is how are we able to live together in the land? And, and I think it's deeply affected by how we hold our stuff. How lightly are we clinging to our resources? I think about this call of Abraham and this promise of blessing. And I have to ask myself and us, are we the blessing that God wants and needs from us? So, uh, on the night that he gave himself up for us, uh, Jesus, uh, he, he took bread. And he, he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat this. And remember that it's my body that was, was broken for you. And do this often in remembrance of me. And we remember something of God's pilgrimage when God came our way and, and journeyed in our direction, it was through the giving of Himself and through brokenness. And then, uh, Jesus uh, he takes the cup. And you know, when you think about the, the Passover meal and what they were celebrating with Passover, this, this cup, it's this, this fourth cup of the Passover meal. It's the cup of salvation. And so Jesus takes this, this cup of salvation. 
and he gives it to his disciples. And he says to them, this is my blood of a new covenant. There's something new happening. And I think a big part of that newness is we no longer covet what someone else has. We, we no longer look selfishly at the world and at the land and, and at the things that, uh, that, that we wish we could cling to or this hoarding of the things that we have. Jesus says, whenever you drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me and remember uh, that I bleed for you and I give the ultimate sacrifice for you, uh, which is my life. And so today at this altar, we remember, we remember the sacrifice and love of God in Christ and we give praise and we give thanksgiving and we remember the mystery of our faith which is that Christ died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And the great prayer that we pray is, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood and that will be made one in your spirit and one in ministry, in generosity, in sacrifice, in our journey to all the world. Amen. Falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your face. Lord, all I am is yours. My whole life I place in your hand, God of I call you answer, and you came to my rescue, and I, I want to be where you are. Falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your face, Lord, all I am is your My whole life I placed in your hands, God of mercy, humble I at your throne and I call you answer and you came to my rescue and I want to be where you are
my life be lifted high in our world be lifted high in our love be lifted high cry cold And you came to my rescue and I want to be where you are. The story of Abram and Lot reveals an important truth about our ability to live peacefully together especially when we have so much wealth and such abundance of possessions. The truth is, there's a fine line between blessing and curse. John Stott once wrote that simplicity is first cousins with contentment. It recognizes that we are pilgrims. It concentrates us on what we need and measures this by what we use. It rejoices in the good things of creation, but hates greed and waste and clutter. I would add that our ability to live simply, to be content and generous, that enables us to be blessing wherever we go. I've got a sneaky suspicion that's been God's idea for us all along. So as we pilgrim today, go in peace and bless somebody. Amen.